Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yet again to another edition of What Really Matters NYC with your host, Tony Keevan, and more importantly, you. Uh, we have a guest today, Francesco Portellos. Fr Francesco, you there? Yes, hey, how are you? And great, thanks for being here. And we're going to get to him. Um, first, let me tell you about the show. It's uh, What Really Matters NYC, live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. We take your callers, your calls right here, the number, dial in 212-757-1541. So we're live for the next uh, 27 minutes. And you can call in. Typically, we have a guest for the first bit, then we do the weather with the weather dude. And then Lorraine, my commentator, our, our commentator, your commentator, she uh, pops in with her helicopter view. Lorraine, you there? Lorraine's there up in the helicopter. <laughs> and um, we go from there. So today, you know, the, the, the big news today, of course, was the uh, uh, various bits and pieces about a man mauling another man in Miami. It was just really getting really bad news day. But we thought forward, you know, and we kind of knew that this was going to be a, uh, a week where we can sit back and think about something. And what we thought we'd think about was education. Okay, we do have some little bits of news that came around that we'll talk about towards the end of the hour. Oh, and at the very end of the hour, we play the number one radio song in the USA, the video, so you won't want to uh, miss that. All right, so what is in the news, though, is little bits and pieces about education. And um, specifically today, uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg wants school officials to have the power to, set to, to fire teachers accused of sexually abusing students. So there's a process that if you're accused of a, as a teacher of sexual abuse of a student, you get an arbitrator between the union and someone else, and this uh, arbitrator recommends action, okay? And Bloomberg, uh, Mayor Bloomberg's group uh, did a, a study and, and showed that in many of those cases that shouldn't happen. So that was in the news. They want to make a law. Um, uh, the, Mayor Bloomberg said today that the city should have the final say on whether teachers accused of sexual misconduct should be fired, even if hearings determine that they should keep their jobs. So under state law, misconduct cases involving teachers are decided after a hearing before an arbitrator chosen by both the school district and the teachers' union. But Mr. Bloomberg argues that the union wants to protect its member more than it does its students. It proposed a new state law that would give the city school chancellor or any school superintendent in New York State the ability to override an arbitrator's decision and fire or penalize a teacher in a sex misconduct case. So that was in the news. And then there was also um, the teacher ratings was in the news back on uh, February. Okay, and uh, that came out and a lot of teachers were rated and schools were rated. There's a big struggle about that. And then in January, the mayor took on the teachers union and school plans, okay, and talked a lot about um, failing schools, et cetera. And I saw this news item about uh, Francesco Portellos and something called the rubber rooms. And I was wondering, Francesco, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you, what's happening to you. And it seemed to remind me of a story from the past, and I just wanted to kind of ask you some questions, but get your experience first, because maybe you know a lot more than a lot of us about education. Okay. Um, sure. I'm actually, by trade, an engineer. I have a degree in environmental and civil engineering from Polytechnic, and I did that for about seven years, from 2000 to 2007. In uh, 2005, I decided, you know, let me, uh, since the U.S. is lacking in engineers, let me leave the profession and go into education and try and maybe spark some interest in more science and engineering, and that's exactly what I did. So from 2007 to the present time, I was uh, at a middle school in Staten Island, and I created a STEM lab, science, technology, engineering, and math. And I thought I was doing pretty good at it, uh, considering the letters of recommendation, the thank yous from the parents. You know, I kind of figured, you know, that was my goal, and I was achieving it. And, um, you know, that's... That's, that's what was going on up until about December. Uh, that was my four and a half years in, and again, satisfactory observations, no problems. Um, but my issue is, um, you know, it's probably different than other people in the rubber room or reassignment center. I'm not sure there's uh, a lot of us, apparently. I happen to um, start qu asking questions uh, about budget and goals, because the school I work at is also my local school, so my neighbors, my son's one year old, uh, uh, one years old, years old, sorry, and he's eventually going to go to that school. So I, I took it a little more to heart that that school has to be great because my son's going to be going there in a, yeah, 11 years, but still, you got to start sometime. So I started asking questions about the goals, uh, and it, that's, that was part of my, actually, my, uh, my responsibilities as a school leadership team member. But uh, something must have happened. When I started asking questions, uh, the administration didn't like it, and he started uh, pretty much... Uh, 
fierce attack. So from December to the present time, it was a fierce attack. I mean, I got three disciplinary letters in three in ten days. I had an investigation started on me about some computers. I was called divisive and a hindrance to the community, even though I was fighting to keep a, a school open the day before down the block. So it was, it was the timing is all too coincidental. It's not like I started to be a bad teacher or an effective teacher. But lo and behold, April 26th, after some investigations I tried to start um, against the administration, I found myself reassigned, quote unquote, which is uh, when they take a teacher out of the classroom and put them in, you know, they call them, rubber room's not the real name, it's a reassignment center. They sent me out to uh, another location to do desk duty. And, you know, I've been fighting that since April 26th uh, fiercely because um, I've created a blog. I don't know if you saw it. I started blogging. I just started putting everything out there as it was happening to me before I got reassigned. So basically the public was watching this unfold day by day to the point that I'm getting tons of viewers daily. Um, I think I hit 15,000 views, which may not be a lot, but it's definitely something, and it's caught people's attention, including the New York Post. Uh, CNN called me Yeah, yesterday. that was the, the picture I saw was in the, um, the New York Post. Yeah. About, um, it had a room with some boxes in the back with uh, like Xerox or some sort of copy paper or something. Right, so what it seems like they did, and I'm still new to this because I was, I was all about creating lessons and teaching and not about politics and everything else, but it seems like they took these larger reassignment centers in 2010 and they broke them down into smaller ones and separated everyone. So now it's a little harder to see how many people are in there. So that, that picture you see in there is from my blog. And it was basically a copy room in Ozone Park. So I, I live and work in Staten Island. That's my district. And they assigned you to this room? They assigned me to that room. So did you get any tasks to do to kind of maintain the time or anything? No. I, I actually asked for work. I even emailed people. I said, look, I'm, I'm an engineer. How, how long were you in this room, uh, Francesco? What's that? How long were you in this room? That room from about May 30th to yesterday. Yesterday I got pulled out as soon as CNN called. Uh, the DOE seems a little too timely, uh, co coincidental. They, the producer from CNN called the DOE and says, is it true that this guy's, you know, the, the teachers are not given, being given work and Mr. Portel is saying he's not given any work. So right after that, they must have gotten on the phone, called my supervisor in my building, and they gave me, uh, they gave me some... Are you going to miss the room? <laughs> <laughs> I, the guys say they miss me down there. They're like, hey, you know, we miss you because I was kind of teaching them down there as a tech teacher. You know, they're, uh, they're not as tech savvy, but uh, I felt like I was doing my tech responsibilities. Excellent. So Good for you. you. take the teacher out of the classroom, but I guess you can't take the classroom out of the teacher. Well, I, I read some of that, some of the affidavits and stuff that were filed, the complaints, et cetera, on you. It was very racy stuff. But I want to ask you, because you're a teacher and you, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're quote unquote upstream against the system. Um, do you think it's right to seek easier ways to fire teachers in sex cases? Sex cases are totally different. Uh, okay. So you're, you're okay with that? I'm just asking your opinion because you're a teacher, you know? You know. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a father now, too, so I'm, my mindset, I guess, is also Got it. different. I mean, not that that makes In any case, uh, teachers should not be inappropriately touching students. Cool. Now, you know. All right, excellent. How about ratings? Did you, did you get a rating? May I ask yours? No, or did you I, I did not get a rating. The ratings were only for ELA and math, and being that I was a tech, uh, technology teacher, I did not get a rating. What did you think of the rating system? Um, I looked at the formula. I don't think it's, it's accurate. Uh, there were teachers that were consistently doing well, so they didn't show much growth because the kids were coming in as honors. So they were getting low ratings because they didn't show growth, even though the kids were consist consistently doing well, Yeah, is my understanding. And I also noticed a, a spread of the data that it's a very even distribution amongst all different types of schools and races and... and, 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 and um, Right. And classes, and That's that, correct. you know, e e e even data really st stresses me because I've never seen it before. Um, yeah, like my school is between two large housing projects. Uh, we do have, you know, uh, let's say, quote unquote, tougher students that come from, you know, maybe families that won't necessarily always push, hey, you're not going outside till you study kind of thing. And that falls on the teacher when, you know, when you compare it to another teacher down. Sounds like, say, South Staten Island, where things are a little different. Got it. Um, 
Well, so, Francesco, is there anything else you'd like to say? We're going to let you go, but I really thank you for that view you have. I'm sorry you've had to spend all that time in the room. I'm glad you're out. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not no, the fight's not even... I'm still in there. I'm, uh, I'm in there. I could be there for months. And uh, the thing is, they don't have any charges on me, so I haven't been charged. So imagine I have to report somewhere not knowing why I'm out of the school. The kids don't know why their teacher is not there. The parents don't know. No one, I mean, not no one knows, but someone must know somewhere. But that's what's broken with the system of the rubber room process is that it takes so long to even charge someone. There's guys in there from February. They have, they have no idea why they're there. Well, Francesco, let's do this then. Yeah. Um, what's your site again? ProtectPortellos.com. ProtectPortellos.com. Okay. I, also, I made a shortcut, uh, DTOE.org. That's Don't Tread on Educators. DTOE.org. Yeah, okay. Right Listen, we'll check time. in with you periodically in okay. the rubber room and see how you're doing, all right? And I thank you for your update. We really appreciate hearing it. It's all nice right. to hear right. a, a reality story uh, from a teacher. All right. Thanks, Tony. Th thanks so much. Take care, right. Francesco. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. You Hello. You have to speak up and turn down your Hello. television. Hi. Hi. You have to speak up and turn down Hi. your television. Hello. Hi. Hi. Could you hear me? Yeah, but you really got to yell. I, I got to yell. Oh, boy, I got to yell. This is I good. I got you sing. now. I, I, can, I, I turned I up sing? the... It's good now. Go I for it. I can sing. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can hear? We can hear okay. you just fine. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, But like you have that. to turn right. down your television. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that the... Oh, okay, I just wanted to... Oh, Oh. Because you hear okay, it delayed. It's hold delayed on. when Let it comes out the television. Down. That's the network effect, it's called. Everything I know. Wait, maybe. Okay, I got you. There you go. Just listen in on the phone. Okay. All right. It's the same rule. You. It's been that way for um, 40 years. I just years. wanted to say that um, the reason why about the kids, that they're coming out being born smart, you know, and they're trying to dumb them down. So this is what all of this is about. I don't see why people don't know. They're dumbing the kids down because they're being born smart. All of the black and Puerto Rican kids are being born smart. So they want them to be dumb. So that's why all of this school stuff is going on because they don't want them to know anything. Uh, they're being born super smart. And, you know, that's a threat to anybody, you know. So, because, uh, you know, for my personal self, my kids was born super smart, and I can't tell anybody because they, they'd be investigating me, and, and they'll have me under the machine and trying to find out about my genes and, and, you know, and all of that. So, you know, this is what it's all about. They're dumbing down people so that way, that way nobody could know that they're smart, and everybody can think that they're dumb, and then this is how you get rid of people, you know? So this is what the school thing is about, and I don't know why everybody don't know this, you know. I, I don't, I don't understand, but I got it. But as long as, like I said, but it's not no good if it's just my kids being smart. It has to be a whole lot of, you know, kids. So you know, only. In other words, it's just going to be my kids walking around the, the planet doing well, and all the other kids is just going to be doing bad. So that's not going to do my kids any good if they're just doing good and, and everybody else is walking around doing bad. So, you know, uh, Especially the scientists if they're super might smart. take me in and put me under um, something, find out what's going on with my genes and try to erase it and erase it, you know? Okay, love, hold on a second. Okay, catch your yeah. breath one second. Catch your breath. Okay. <gasps> I'm going to catch my breath. Listening to you, i got to catch my breath. <gasps> Whoa. Lorraine, you got a comment on any of that? Well, so the caller is saying that Mr. Portellos is in uh, trouble now for being too good of a teacher and trying to raise the bar. Is that what she's saying? I'm saying that if you have super smart kids, they don't want you to have super smart kids. They want them to be dumb because they're a threat to society. If you have black smart kids, they're a threat to society, you know? So they like, want uh, them to like, be dumb. like President Obama. This is what I'm saying. They want them to be dumb. <laughs> and, so, and so if you have a bad teacher, they get rewarded. And then the it has nothing to do with a teacher. It has to do with it. being born smart. You know? And it, it, no teacher can, you know, 
I was I, I was blessed with smart kids that were born smart, you know, and society tried to dumb them down, but they wasn't able to because I got a grip on them. So, you know, and this is what other parents have to do because society's trying to dumb you down. So, listen, you know? love, society I'm going to let you go so we can dumb you down. And this is what it's about. That's what it's about. That's what this show is about. <laughs> Listen, love, th I thank you for your call, all right? And I hope I didn't dumb you down with our, with our show here. I appreciate your call, but we're going to, we got like three minutes left for other New Yorkers to call. I really get your point, though. I think, know, a lot of, I think a lot of things dumb true. down our kids, okay, including television. I, I hope maybe some people, you know, I think our show actually is the one that doesn't dumb them down. But I'm going to let you go, love, okay? Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Whoa. Okay, a couple more minutes, be, ladies and gentlemen. Lorraine, go for it. She may be on to something. She may be on to something. Hello, you're on the air. Okay, how you doing? I'm doing okay, but you got to turn down the television. Okay, Welcome to yeah. Totally Open heavy? Phones. Yes, sir. Yeah, Welcome. I can't understand. Okay, I, I can't understand what she's saying because, you, you know. You got to turn uh, down your television. What the she's volume. coming from because when you got the. Uh, Oh, tell them, okay, tell them, okay, okay, here you go. You know, I can't understand where she's coming from because, you know, when you, you're already born and uh, intelligent and, and and she's talking about uh, cultivating it, and uh, but when then you get into these schools, man, you know, and then these schools sort of like there's so much chaos at the Board of Ed at the top, man, you know, and then it's, it's overcrowding and this and that. How can the kids learn? And then you don't have enough seats, you don't have enough time. Then they cut the, uh, they cut different things to actually for the kids and uh, to uh, help them to mature and help them to, uh, to you know, have, you know, they cut a lot of programs to help the kids because it's all it becomes a money thing. And then you know you wonder why the kids are not making it and this and there's all kinds of it's just all kinds of chaos at the top. You know, and it's all about the money, you know, and it's, it is kind of thing like, well, you don't want these kids to learn and get too much of kids. It's more money being spent in the suburbs and less money in the in the cities and this and that. You know, uh, I can't I can't understand what she's saying because when I was a kid, you know, uh, as far as uh, teaching and stuff like that, we didn't get the. Uh, of course, it was a different time. There wasn't any computers or nothing, but. Uh, it was uh, sort of like dumbing down, you know. It's like uh, everybody can't make it, you know. Everybody can't make it no matter what. But some kids are going to get in, just some kids are not, you know. You know, and I can't understand what she's saying, you know. It's all about that dollar, you know, basically, you know. I mean, it's just totally greed from the White House to the Congress to all. They can't get nothing done. You, you Can't you see that? They can't get nothing done. It's just like... You know, they're spending money on all kinds of pork, and you can't get nothing through. It's just a, it's just a sham, man. The whole thing is a sham, yeah. and everybody is so greedy. It's like, let me get mine. The hell with everybody else. I'm in here. I got to play the game because all those congressmen that went in there who got elected, who figured, I'm going to go ahead and make a change. I'm going to do You know what? When they got in there with those good old boys and those good old boys, Told them in that back room, you know what? Then they realize, you know what? I'm getting paid for nothing, man. So it's, you tell the people whatever they want to hear, and then when you get in there, man, you can't do a damn thing because those people want to be congressmen for the rest of their life, and all they want to care about is uh, their campaign fundraising, and they can't get nothing done, you know? And it, it's like it's a, it's, a, it's a disease that took over this country and it's, it, and it's killing everybody. It's like a disease. And it's called greed. Thank you. Whew. Lorraine? <laughs> wow. Wow, man. I don't know. Huh. And we got another one here. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Well, wow. ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to have like 60 seconds left. Lorraine, um, thank you so much for sticking with me tonight. You know, it was a, a very interesting night, to say the least. Can you hear me, Lorraine? Yeah, he really, uh, Mr. Portello really opened a can of worms. Yeah, he did open a can of worms. 
Well, I'm going to see if we can get to our um, closeout music really fast. I don't think we have the time, but I'm going to give it a try because uh, that's what I tried to do. And there we go. Good night, Lorraine. Thank you.